what would be some of the uh, the primary herbs and uh, ingredients that would be harming your liver in a lot of these preparations? Are there some common so in, factors in them? Yeah, so uh, if we look at this uh, herb-induced liver injury, which is known as Kili, H-I-L-I, herb-induced liver injury, we have a lot of data from uh, traditional Chinese medicine because they use it right, left, and center for even their routine practice. And uh, they have specific uh, uh, herbs that can actually cause liver injury and it's been documented. But for us, in Ayurvedic uh, practice, we have never actually looked into uh, clinical benefits of any of these herbs, which is why we don't know the adverse events also. So what I have seen and what we have published mostly in our data, uh, we have had patients on uh, Giloy, uh, Ashwagandha. We have had patients on Aloe Vera. We have had patients on Turmeric which has caused something known as autoimmune uh, liver injury. The biggest issue is that all of these patients actually, they, they consume multiple herbs. It's not a single herb that we can actually pinpoint. So it's all multi-herbal products. So all of these herbs will have interactions with each other, interactions within the human system. And this is actually what is uh, promoting liver injury. So we don't know what metabolites actually cause uh, this type of liver injury, but we do have a small uh, idea on the type of metabolites that are found inside the uh, drug because we have analyzed all the drugs and we have identified a lot of plant chemicals, not as phytochemicals or phytosterols, which can actually harm the liver. And uh, it's not a single agent, it's multiple agents together in tandem causing harm. But you mentioned a lot of the things that are being prescribed nowadays, especially like ashwagandha and giloy. And have these specifically been found to injure the liver directly? Or do you think it's one of the other ingredients that go along with this? Like say with Chaman Prash, giloy is filling you know amazon stores with juices of different varieties mixed in with a whole bunch of different things turmeric of course is something that everybody has been recommended have turmeric milk have hot turmeric milk to reduce inflammation and to avoid getting covid and things like that these are the three major ingredients that i think are really making their rounds these days and do you think people are in genuine danger even if they're consuming these singular supplements separately or do you think it's more of the combined effect yeah so uh, in that sense i think we'll have to discuss a very important point which is known as types of liver injury so we mm -hmm. have two types of liver injuries basically uh, one is known as dose dependent and a classic mm -hmm. example is paracetamol so if you have paracetamol beyond a particular uh, cutoff that is more than eight to ten grams at one shot that actually can cause liver injury and can lead to liver failure and lower doses of paracetamol, somewhere around four to six grams, is harmful in a patient who actually has an underlying liver disease. So this is dose dependent. So if you consume it within the dose, it does not harm you. But if you consume it mm. above a particular threshold, it harms you. That is dose dependent. Now there are other drugs which can actually uh, cause harm without, you know, it's independent of the dose. Like you take mm. a single drug or a single tablet or a single dose, whatever dose it is, it can act harm you. This is not a theosyncratic liver injury. Now, this is a very dangerous because anybody can develop any type of liver injury with that particular single drug exposure. And this is very classically seen with painkillers. So if you look at the older version of painkillers like, you know, diclofenac and nimbusulide, which are actually not, not, should not be available in the market, but it is still available. Those painkillers can actually cause liver injury if you take a single dose. Unfortunately, all of the Ayurvedic herbals are idiosyncratic because we have not done any studies on any of these herbals in the right method actually identify what doses are good for us or what is beneficial or what doses are actually harmful. Most of these patients actually take these uh, multi-herbal drugs over you know few weeks or few months and there is no regulation in whatever doses they're consuming. One Vaidya might say take three teaspoons per day. One Vaidya might say take five teaspoons per day. But that is how it goes because there is no regulation. They don't know what they're doing. And this actually can cause idiosyncratic liver injury. And if you ask me, anything which is unknown that can actually promote or cause a liver injury in the idiosyncratic manner, stay away from it. Because that can actually lead to liver transplants. This is very important because I've had three patients consuming Giloy and Ashwagandha together and coming with severe liver injury, jaundice, and they have actually gone into something known as drug-induced acute liver failure where they require a liver transplant to stay alive. And oh this is idiosyncratic liver injury. So you don't want to take that chance. You don't want to do something that you don't know about. The simple thing. Mm -hmm. So unless until we have good data to show that, you know, ashwagandha within this dose for mm -hmm. this particular disease is useful, stay away from it.
do we have such clinical data currently available on ashwagandha absolutely not because we want to know what in ashwagandha is benefit beneficial for you so that particular compound or that molecule whatever it is chemical it has to be uh, in its purified state and it has to do benefit for the uh, for the patient or whoever plus it should have negligible side effects or tolerable side effects so unless this is done we don't we don't we don't prescribe the whole plan you know it's like uh, you want to have uh, uh, you want to have a coconut they ask you to come just that that's a report whole coconut tree and uh, you know get a coconut it's like that i mean that's that's not what what's going to happen in in drugs you have to be very focused in whatever you are prescribing and such data is not available for any of these uh, herbs that we are using right now right left and center